What a difference a year makes. It's one of the most difficult questions for a reviewer to answer. Is a one-year upgrade really worth it for the monies over the life of a smartphone? LG as a company has been evolving tremendously over the last couple years. From some significant issues, circa LG G4 era, some experimental designs following which didn't quite pan out, and then finally arriving on the LG V30. One of the best all-round devices this company has ever put together. For 2018, LG has had another challenging year. From a shaky launch on the LG G7 to a mid-year refresh for the V35 that took a lot of us by surprise, but now we finally have the LG V40 in-house to talk about where this brand is going. There's obviously less separation between a G-series device and a V-series device, but that V-label still represents a different argument from LG as to what a top-tier multimedia and content creation phone should resemble. Like most manufacturers, the V40 represents evolution, not revolution. Most of what we liked on the V30 is still going to be here on the V40. Similar design language, similar contouring. I might lean towards the V30 for having slightly cleaner lines, especially on that rear panel where the V40 kind of looks a little like Triclops from He-Man. And of course, you cannot escape the notch, a very polarizing element for 2018, trying to maximize screen real estate while also including space for hardware like your selfie cameras. I personally think a forehead and a chin bezel just look better. They look cleaner, they're more functional, and they don't cut into and molest my display for including my webcam. Many have been praising LG this year for refining their screen technology. Now, I got really lucky with the LG V30. I think I got a pretty good example of what their OLED manufacturing can deliver, but it just seems the V40 is a step above. We would expect that that they would again be improving and evolving over their previous year products. The phones are obviously more alike than they are different, and this year's improvements come down to a handful of lifestyle features and a chipset bump. In daily operation, it's not likely that many people will actually be able to notice, actually be able to point to a substantial improvement or substantial differences in UI performance and loading apps. It's when you really dig into the claims LG is making for this device, really dig into the focus, things like content creation, video editing and rendering, image stabilization, like the LG G7 earlier this year, that Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 makes a noticeable difference for things like rendering high quality UHD video. Smoother, higher quality video, noticeably better fun features like slow motion video, that by itself is a nice bump over last year's phone. LG is the objective top pick. They are the best option around for people who like their ears, if you like to listen to high quality audio from nice headphones. Even going back to an LG V10, that phone can largely still outperform almost everything on the market today. But where the V40 pulls ahead of last year's phone is the inclusion of Boombox. The V30 speaker is a bit tame. It's functional. It's fine for alerts. The V40 can practically fill a room with decent audio if you don't want to have to carry around a Bluetooth speaker. And of course, we have two whole extra cameras on the V40 that we don't have on the V30. I am very happy to see the return of the standalone wide angle selfie shooter. I think that's just a fun, functional, flexible perk to add to a front facing camera solution. And the rear of the phone, we get that extra zoom sensor and a whole extra sensor and lens combination just for a little extra reach. LG's zoom sensor is a respectable performer, if maybe a generation behind some of the competition. I think some of the criticisms of this extra camera are totally fair, where it doesn't quite feel fully incorporated into the V40's aesthetic. It is a fun perk, it's a fun feature to have over the V30, but if the argument for the V-Series is the best possible platform for content creation, creation, then I don't feel people using the older phone are going to really feel like this is a significant deficit. Year to year, these phones are very similar. In daily use, they have the same battery capacity, but refinements to the chipset, the newer processor in the V40, do help push the V40 to slightly better runtime. I get a little bit more battery life. I get a little bit more runtime out of this phone throughout my day. A number of phones for 2018 have faced very similar scrutiny. But let's wrap this comparison up. Where's that leave us between the LG V30 and the LG V40? Is this phone worth the one-year upgrade? 
If you take LG at their word and you use your phone as a total platform for content creation from soup to nuts, you get everything done from the phone, then absolutely yes, this phone is worth flipping your V30 and migrating to the V40. The more powerful chipset, the extra cameras, the extra RAM, all of these will be excellent quality of life improvements for you getting your work done during the day. This whole video was produced on my LG V40, from writing the script, to importing footage, to shooting all of this content, me talking to you right now, editing, rendering high quality UHD video, and uploading it to the YouTubes, all of it was done through this phone. The only thing this phone isn't good at is taking video of itself. I don't have decent enough mirrors to pull that off. So I did fill in some of this footage. Add in a fun feature like Boombox, knowing that you're still gonna be taken care of with some great headphone audio. And I think this is a solid argument. I think you've made a good argument for moving up to the V40. However, it's worth mentioning the counter argument, the notion that, Regular people don't do things with their phones. First, I kind of resist the idea that we should only judge or review products, consumer electronics, by some lowest common denominator idea of general consumers as the filthy unwashed masses. If we want general consumers to start getting more out of their tech purchases, getting a better return on their investments, then we geeks need to rise to that level of discussion. We can't get lazy and just collect all of these really awesome glowing rectangles and all of these fun gadgets, but only use them for covering the barest of basics. But I digress. If you're not driving your phone to this level, then sure, yeah, I think you're gonna be fine sitting out with the V30 for another year. Truth be told, you'd probably still be okay with a V20 for another year. Prices on our gadgets are climbing. I think we're gonna be seeing even higher price tags coming into 2019, so it's even more critical that we are examining, we are diving into the claims made by manufacturers when they're putting out ever more expensive gadgets. LG is not claiming that you pay this price to cover the basics. LG is making the argument that you pay this price for a top tier multimedia platform with incredible content creation capabilities. Like Samsung, maybe your phone is powerful enough now so that you can leave your laptop at home and still get all your work done. Judged by that claim, IMO, LG is making one of the stronger arguments in favor of the one-year upgrade. As always, thank you so much for watching. I've got a lot of catching up to do on the LG V40. I'm way behind. But while my iPhone XS camera review took hours and hours to render, I was able to almost fully complete this video that you're watching right now. In the coming days, you know we're gonna be doing deep dives into the audio tech and the camera tech, and I'll be sharing my thoughts on the entire phone as a whole, that full review for the LG V40. If you really wanna see how these pocket supercomputers compare, I hope you'll head on over to patreon.com slash some gadget guy, the exclusive home for all of my camera and audio deep dive reviews. And it's becoming a really fun community of like-minded tech geeks. You'll get some other fun perks too, like early access to videos, BTS and production diaries. Again, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. I really hope you'll check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you on the next review.